have reasons. Your enemies are trained. Number one, they can't keep up. You moving at a different level than them, which tires them out. Number two, they encourage you to slow down, but their intentions are not genuine. Number three, you are becoming a burden to them. Your success, power, and accomplishments are weighing them down. Number four, what's easy for you is hard for them. Mimicking you is going wrong for them. And number five, you are hard to defeat. But when you got the power of God, you always on the winning team. Keep a rich mentality. Hebrews chapter 11 Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead, yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony, that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen, as he moved with fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir to the righteousness which is by faith. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for the city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand, which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Hey, Shalom. All praises to Yahweh Bashem. Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakakodash, much mercy. Um, to you sincere brothers out there, the true house of David, all you brothers that believe in his covenant, that have been redeemed, all you brothers that can understand his new covenant, and for all you uh, listeners that's just uh, understanding this new covenant, a hey, shalom to all of you. If you can understand this new covenant, you're of God, all right, because it's a lot of people that don't understand this covenant. And they don't have the mercies of God on them. Therefore, there's no grace given unto them. Therefore, they have no favor in the Lord. If you're able to see in this time, that means you have the Lord's favor. So it takes faith for you to grow and to see more things. You know, we're teaching men how to see this thing spiritually. So I want to do something this morning. I want to take it back to Genesis. You know, something I haven't done in a while. <laughs> you know, I mean, we go through a lot of things, but I want to go back to Genesis with Abraham because Abraham was an operating uh, of the on that of that law. Of the old law, let me just say it like that. 
the Lord was dealing with him and he was already in the spirit. This is an example of not having that, not being under that law, but being moved by the spirit. This is a perfect example. And so what applied to Abraham applies to us right now, which are in the new covenant. That, that are really of the new covenant that really believe and that can really um, um, understand what Paul is saying and understand what the Lord was saying. Um, because it's, it's set up that way that men uh, are not supposed to understand this covenant. It's really set up that way because what men did, they corrupted the old Testament. They, they um they took the old testament and what they did it was they use it for evil like guys are using it now to get tithes and to uh that's that covenant was for the flesh for men that can't uh that don't know what to do you know you have to be told not to commit adultery you know you have to be told what to eat what's clean and what's not clean you see what i'm saying you have to be told certain things the old law was for carnal men that's why in uh first corinthians first timothy the scriptures say real quick that that law wasn't meant for a righteous man no i'm, I'm not going to get it but i want to read genesis i want to go over abraham um the father of faith this is an example of the spirit just dealing with you and this ain't carnal man a lot of you guys are just carnal I was listening to one of the brothers and yeah, you guys in these camps, you're in the trans, you're carnal, you're brute beasts. You guys are fucking, you guys got bug out bags and shit and, and guns and you're carnal. You don't have any faith. As long as you're under that old law of Moses and you're teaching men Moses and shit and Esau, you're all carnal in those camps. A lot of you guys works were in vain. You see, a lot of you guys works were in vain. The only thing you're telling guys is that they're Israelites. After that, you guys really, really, you're not even of God, bro. You're, you're all carnal. You don't have any faith because that law was not a faith. Matter of fact, before I read Genesis 22, let me grab that. And so anybody holding the Moses right now, you, you're not of faith either. And it's best you stay away from guys that is... um holding to Moses because they don't really have any faith. They don't have the faith for Abraham. And I'm going to read it. Like the scripture tell you, Abraham so joined, he left his land, not even knowing where he was going to go, but he knew the Lord. The Lord was guiding him to go certain places. And, and look at that. Abraham became a father of nations through the faith that he had by just moving through it. That's what you call moving through faith. A lot of you guys are carnal, man. <laughs> you guys are this the the Bible ain't even for a lot of you guys, man. You just you guys are all you guys are cursed, man. A wicked generation. This is uh Galatians 3 and 10. For as many as of the works of the law, for as many as of are of the works of the law are under the curse. You see that? For it is written, curses everyone that continue not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident that just shall live through faith. The just shall live by faith. So when we go, when we read uh, Abraham, that story was of faith because it was in Abraham to know what to do. Because God was in him. And so this is what faith is about. Faith is about you knowing what to do without somebody telling you what to do. And just like us in the new covenant, if the spirit is on you, if it's really on you, you're going to do what you have to do. You're going to do what's right. And nobody going to have to tell you not to teach false doctrine. Nobody's going to have to tell you that that old law has been done away. The old law was done away when the Lord died. But guys are carnal because they hold to the flesh because that law is on the flesh. That's why you got clowns saying that they're the, the Levitical high priests. The Lord done away with that. 
You guys ain't even in the spirit. Then, then these guys, Sakari, we seen videos of you guys with guns. We've seen that shit. So you guys are carnal, man. None of you guys have nothing. And then it's crazy. You got this other millstone camp. They're carnal just like Sakari, and they're going back and forth. Both of you, all you guys are carnal. All you guys are of the world. You're of the flesh. It don't matter what you guys say about the scriptures. What's going to happen is the Lord's going to close all you guys' mouths. None of you guys are of faith. None of you guys. It says, verse 12, and the law is not of faith. Right, so that old law is not of faith. None of you guys are of faith. So it don't matter what you guys are saying. And I don't I even like bringing that guy up, but that dude in Texas, man, that guy is a, a wicked demon. Like a lot of you guys, you're wicked, man. You're just wicked. And, and the thing is, you're, you're a lot of you guys just like these elders and shit. And that's why we teach because we're trying to help men come out of that shit. And guys are coming out of that shit and it's beautiful. But what's hap what has happened is that these guys are set up to hold you to that old law, which is cursed. So they're cursed. So they've never had any faith. They've always been carnal. However, 15, 20, 30 years guys been teaching, they've been carnal than a motherfucker. They've never been in the spirit. So it, it don't matter if they taught you some Hebrew. They've never taught you Yahweh Shai to be in the spirit, to repent to the Lord. So they've never been in the spirit. They've just had carnal info. Guys talking about they're, they're the chief priests and Paul, what Paul is saying is this and James is going off. You guys got some goddamn nerve. You guys are reprobates in these camps. You guys are carnal. You don't understand James. You don't understand the book of Hebrews. You don't understand Paul because you're carnal, man. You guys, you guys were like Paul said real quick. You guys are enemies of the cross real quick. And I'm going to get on with this lesson. Well, Paul said, you guys are enemies of the cross any goddamn way. Philippians uh, 3 and 18, for many walk of whom I've told you often and tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of the anointed. Paul is telling you that guys are the enemies of the cross. They are totally against the Lord right now. Do you understand? Paul said that they are enemies of the cross. Whose end is destruction, right? So you got to come out of these fucking uh, wide gates. All these guys in these camps, they're carnal. And they got a murderous spirit on them. They're cursed, man. Whose end is destruction. Anybody holding to Moses right now. Anybody teaching you Moses right now, they're, they're carnal. Anybody. Anybody teaching you Moses and Moses had his time already. And matter of fact, um, Moses... Honors your how was shy. Moses honors what Yahweh Shai did. Therefore, he honors what Paul's doing through the Spirit. And we honor what, you know, they honor what, what Moses did, but that was his time. So, guys, teaching you Moses, you don't have a spiritual understanding. You're carnal, you're just as carnal as. These guys in these groups, a bunch of fucking brutes, brute beasts. <laughs> hey, you got to get away from these guys. They're carnal. They don't have no faith, bro. That's why guys are exalted. You're exalted if you're a fucking scumbag. I'm, I'm going to just have to say it. If you're exalted and everybody likes you, everybody knows your name and shit, you want to go where everybody know you. <laughs> That's what the Lord said in, um, in Luke. He said, them that are highly esteemed among men, they're abomination. And you go into that word esteem, it goes into honor. You do not want to be honored in this world like how guys are being honored. Guys are of the world, man. Philippians 3 and 19, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Guys are of the earth. That's why the Lord said, you are from the earth, I am from above. And they were keeping that old law. That's of the earth. 
Yahweh Shai, he's, he's from above. He has that heavenly bread. He said, Moses did not give you this manna that I'm giving you. Matter of fact, let me read that, man. I like, I love reading that. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, John 6 and 32. Then Yahweh Shai said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. But my father give you the true bread, which is from heaven. Right. So Moses, he didn't give you the the spiritual manna. The law, that old law, it was a, it was the whole law is carnal. It was a carnal commandment. It teaches you how to do all the carnal things the right way. <laughs> It did then, then that law it ain't written for men that are through the spirit that know what to do through the spirit. So let's go to Abraham, man. I've been and went off into a whole nother lesson. <laughs> but that uh old law is not a faith. And so anybody teaching you Moses in this time, they're not a faith. And it's it's just that simple. It's just that simple. The new covenant is Three times, it is three times more heavier than Moses. It is. That's why Abraham, that's why the Lord said Abraham rejoiced at his day. He, he was telling the wicked scribes and the Pharisees that because they were saying they was children of Abraham. And the Lord like, yeah, we know you're children of Abraham, but this word that I'm speaking, I don't have no place in you guys. Just like this new covenant, it don't have a place in you guys. You guys are teaching uh, Esau and Moses and all you guys in these camps, man. You're a lot of you are doomed. You're caught up in something that you don't. You're caught up in something that you really don't have nothing to do with. And meaning spiritually, um, spiritually. Yeah, and so so like it's spiritually, guys are caught up. And something it's just like what uh what King David said uh in uh Romans. He said, Let their let their table become a snare. So guys are in the trap in these camps, man. You're in a spiritual snare. And a lot of you guys, um, you won't be corrected because it's meant for you to be caught up in that snare. And that's that's those uh bundles of tears that's being gathered, guys uh, that's in these camps. They're they're bundles of tares. So let's go to Genesis real quick. Genesis 22 and uh, read read uh, a little bit of this. Genesis 22 and 1 and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him and he said behold here I am and he said, take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, get thee into the land of Maria and offer him there for a burnt offering upon of one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And this is the way that the Lord actually he tests you. You see, you, you, you're always being tested. Are you going to do the right thing? And this is this proves who men are if they're if they're able to do certain things the Lord has you to do. And that's how we can see certain guys is like if the Lord is. If you're doing what the Lord instructed you to do is to test, you know, to, to test and see if you're going to do what the Lord wants you to do and, and show your faith. You have to show your faith to a certain degree for the Lord to deal with you. Just like uh, I did that video, a leap of faith. Yeah, you have to take a leap of faith. Just like that priest told uh, Superman, he said, hey, man, look, sometimes you got to take a, a leap of faith. The trust comes later. Once you take that faith, then the Lord can deal with you because he see that you're willing to take a leap of faith. That's what this is about. So after you pass that test, then you could be granted more things. Granted, it be more understanding Granted, it be more wisdom. Granted, it be more faith. Granted, it be more spiritual blessings or spiritual gifts. Whatever it may be, wherever wherever it may be, you have to show the Lord that you're 
that you're able to uh, that you're good enough to pass certain tests to get to the next level so you can be blessed. That's what we're dealing with right now. So you have to show the Lord that, that you actually can do what he tell you to do and that you have faith. So what we're finding out is that a lot of guys never had no faith. Never. They, they're, they're good at just words and information and playing semantics like Esau. They can teach you all these carnal lessons. Guys don't know who wrote Hebrews. I'll show you who wrote Hebrews. <laughs> it's easy. All you guys are carnal, man. Like we can see so clear. That's why we don't move like camps at all. You know, we don't move like camps. We don't really want to be seen at all. You just hear us and you get the understanding. That's that's why we're here. We're here in the shadows. <laughs> That's the only reason why we're here. We're here to help men in the shadows. And this is for a selective few that if you can get to it, repent. If you're of God, you're going to repent. If you're not of God, you're going to reject it. That's fine. That's why we're not here for everybody. Uh, Genesis 22 and 3, it says, and Abraham rose up early in the morning. So this is a hard thing, you know, to... to, to Want to sacrifice your son on the altar? You see what I'm saying? And this is a precursor to the Lord. Genesis 22 and 3. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and calf in the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place of God which God had told him. So look at that. Abraham was willing to do what the Lord told him to do through the spirit. Through the spirit, he was going to do what the Lord showed him to do. So this, this, this is what we're seeing in this time. We're seeing that a lot of guys are not, uh, they don't have no faith to do what the spirit tells them to do because the spirit ain't telling guys to do anything. See, Abraham, you have to have that faith to do what's right even if it may seem hard just like us man we've had we've been through so many things I've stood out on the street for a, a decade dealing with Jake a decade teaching the wrong shit but now we're teaching the right thing and that's why we are instructed to uh to teach this word, man. I love teaching what we're teaching because it's helping so many brothers, man. I actually love helping brothers. I actually love teaching. I love doing this for the Lord. I love seeing brothers grow. I love it, man. And in the process as brothers is growing, a lot of you men are being chopped down. You see, you got to be cut down. I was watching the video, man. I was watching one of these guys. He was chopping down a fucking tree. He chopped down a whole last tree and it's a technique to it. It's a, it's a certain technique to chopping down that tree like that. And that's what we're doing. There's a certain type of technique the new covenant is doing and going out where it's chopping guys down and in the process is building men up. So it's beautiful. Genesis 22 and 5 And Abraham said unto his young son Abide here with the ass And I And the lad Will go yonder and worship And come again unto you And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering And laid it upon Isaac his son And he took the fire in his hand and a knife And they went both of them together And Isaac spoke to Abram his father And said my father And he said here I am, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. So they went both of them together. So check this out. It says, And they came to the place that he had told him of Abraham, built an altar in the tree and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood 
And Abraham stretched his hand and took a knife to slay his son. So at this moment, Abraham was willing to do what the Lord showed him, told him to do. You have to show this faith. Well, to the point he showed the favor to the point where he was getting ready to slay his son. And his son thought that. His son thought that. Uh, that they were going to burn off of the lamb. And uh, Abram said, my son, going back up to eight, Abram said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. So verse nine, it says, then they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abram built an altar and laid the wood in the altar and bound Isaac, his son. And laid him on the altar. And laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. So Abraham was was ready to do it. You see that? He was just about to slay him. It's heavy, bro. So this is heavy because this shows you that even before the law, uh, the father of Abraham, the father of faith, before the law, uh, he, the spirit was on him to do what the Lord had set him out to do, to do what's right. That's why the scripture tell you that the law is not made for a righteous man. Matter of fact, let me read that before I keep going. So this all ties in, man. Guys don't really have no understanding. Guys desire, like the scripture say, you're desiring to be teachers of the law, but you don't understand what the fuck you're teaching. <laughs> That's why none of you guys um, in these camps, none of you guys can teach us anything. You can't teach us anything. And you can't even teach. You shouldn't be teaching nobody shit. You can't teach us a goddamn thing. Because what we're doing, we're teaching the spirit. You guys are not teaching the spirit. You guys, everything that you guys are is of the flesh. Talking about you're in this grace period waiting to enter into a covenant. That's that is the most craziest shit that you could be teaching right now. Because that means that you're not even you're not hot or cold. You're you're lukewarm. And the Lord said he'll spew your ass out. So a lot of guys, they've been spewed out. Because they're neither hot or cold with the Lord. They're waiting. You see that? And you guys think that you're... You, and you guys that's in a new covenant that say you're you're in Moses and you're following the Lord too. You're in the middle too. That's what that scripture means. You can't... The Lord said you'd rather be hot or cold. You rather are in the new covenant or not. You can't be in Moses too. That's how we understand a lot of you guys are not spiritual. And you just set up to bring confusion. And this has to be pointed out. And and of course you would think, you of course you would think we're of hate. Of course you'd be like, you guys are just hating and you're a wrathful. And, and you don't have no love. Because if you're in the flesh, you hate how we're how, how what the spirit is saying. So of course you think what we're saying is um. Uh, uh, of course, you think what we're saying is hateful because you're because you're carnal. First Timothy one and nine, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient and for the ungodly, for sinners, for the unholy and profane and for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers and man slayers. So the, the law is not made for men that are 
naturally upright and um abraham displayed that his whole story was beautiful the whole story of abraham is beautiful let's go back to genesis 22 and finish this real quick so certain of us have that faith of abraham in us and this was before the law so you have to show the Lord that you're willing to do uh, certain things. So he was willing to slay his son. So he had faith that he was doing the right thing. And a lot of you guys, you don't have that faith for Abraham. You don't. You're not doing the right thing. A lot of you guys are wicked. So he was ready to slay his son. Genesis 22 and 11 and the angel of the Lord called upon him, called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that the, that thou fearest God. Seeing that thou hast withheld thy son, thine only son from me. You see that? Thy only son from me. Let me read that again. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. You see that? So you have to show the Lord your faith. You show the Lord about what? Your works, your belief in your works. Now, is everybody going to have the works in the favor of Abraham? No. Is everybody going to have the works of Peter or the works of Paul? No. There are different levels. Is Everybody don't have 10 talents or five or six or three or two or one or even that one talent. You got to use that talent, whatever it is. But I'm just saying that. You have to show the Lord that you will that you actually believe and you trust in him. And this is this was the faith. And I'm going to say this, man, I don't believe in no guns. I don't believe in that carnal shit. I don't believe in guns. I don't believe in none of that shit. Because it's not it's not the gun. Per se, like you're looking at in the in the carnal. It's the spirit behind everything that rules everything. Let that marinate in your mind. <laughs> so we don't, we move in a totally, we move over here totally different contrary to the world. Because our trust is totally in the Lord. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for. for the, 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 the. Matter of fact, don't let me butcher it. Let, let's just read it. Hebrews uh, 11 and 1. You guys talking about Hebrews don't exist or Hebrews ain't valid. You guys ain't valid. <laughs> Are you fucking reprobates, man? All you guys in these camps are reprobates. Every one of you guys. All, all, every one of you highly esteemed guys, man. You're an abomination to the Lord. Go look up the word abomination. It's a filthy thing. All you elders and you fucking guys and the Sakaris. It don't matter what you guys say. You guys are dead. You're dead, man. You're of the world. You're already dead. Fuck out of here. That old law is dead. All you guys keeping that man under that old law, you're all dead. That's why you're all carnal. Hebrews 11 and 1, it says, it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You see that? It says, for by it, the elders, the true elders, obtain a good report because they actually have faith in the Lord to do the right thing. So the, the law of Moses is not a faith. You guys holding Moses, you're not a faith either. So you telling yourself the garments you wear, that's not a faith either. <laughs> the new moves you like to keep, that's not a faith. Your, your Passovers, that's not a faith. Your sacrifice is not a faith. 
Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to the Lord must believe that he is and that he is a warder of them that diligently seek him. So if you must believe that the Lord is and the Lord is what? He is a rewarder unto them. So what Abraham showed you in Genesis 22 was a was a remarkable leap of faith to show him that he was willing to do what the Lord wanted him to do, that he actually believed in the Lord. So once you like I said again now, so once you show the Lord that you believe in him. And once you show. That you trust in the Lord and once you pass certain levels. And once you get through with certain things, the Lord will bless you with more understanding. He will bless you with more wisdom or he'll bless you with more faith. He'll bring you up on another level uh, higher. Genesis 22 and 12. And he and he said unto him, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I neither now for now I know that thou fears God seeing that thou hast withheld thy son thine only son for me you see that so it's certain things that you're going to have to do to show the Lord that you have faith it's certain things that you're going to have to show the Lord that you actually have faith in him So this is uh, this is what uh, Abraham did to show his trust in the Lord. And by this time, Abraham was um, in tune with the Lord. So once you do, once you show the Lord certain things, he will increase you. And that's what's happening. Certain brothers are being increased by the faith that they're showing tremendously, man. So like, if you don't really believe in this, you're not being increased. You're stuck. A lot of you guys are stuck with Moses. You're stuck in the past. You're stuck. You see? Crazy, bro. Verse 13, Genesis 22 and 13, and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and beheld him a ram caught in a thicket in his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. You see that? So instead of his son, he offered up uh, a ram at that time. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Fire. Je Jehovah Jareth, if I'm saying it right. And it was said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called Abraham out of the heaven a second time and said, by myself, I have sworn, says the Lord, because thou hast done this thing and thou hast withheld thy son, thine only son, that in the blessing I will bless thee. And I will multiply and let me see. You see that? When you obey the Lord and you show the Lord your faith and you pass certain tests, you'll be multiplied. You'll be increased. That's what this story is uh, telling you. That's why you have to take a leap of faith. If we've taken our leaps of faith and we're still taking more leaps. That's why we totally trust in the Lord. We're not carnal like you guys. We're nothing like none of you guys. We don't believe in weapons and guns and bug out bags and shit like that. We don't believe in none of that. Because the Lord is providing. Is that something you guys don't really understand? Genesis 22 and 17, it says that in blessing. I will bless thee and in multiplying, I will multiply thee, thy seed as the stars of heaven 
And as the sand which is upon the seashore, thy she shall possess the gate of his enemies. Woo! And in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. That's right. And so how do we obey uh, the Lord in this time? We feed the sheep. And I, I just want to say this, you know, um, we do as much as we can. Like me, myself, I love to see brothers growing. I love to teach brothers. I love it. So we are held accountable for what we know to whom much is given much is required. So there's nothing wrong with doing as many as videos you can um, teaching the Lord in his covenant. Matter of fact, that's a that's a good thing for you if you teach it the correct way and the right way. Now, if you're teaching wrong, then a lot of you are cursed teaching. If you're teaching men to hold Moses, then you're, you're teaching men to be cursed. That's what you're teaching. That's just the truth. But for you brothers that can teach, teach the Lord. It's just more benefit for you. And if you do that, the Lord will continue to multiply you. You see, just like he did with Abraham. This is our sacrifices, man. These lessons. Our understanding. Certain of us were set up to teach. We're already, we already were predestined to teach the Lord. That's why we're hated by a lot of people. And it's fine, you know. We're not, we're not here to be uh, liked by the multitude. So it says, uh, Genesis 22 and 18, and in thy seed shall all nations, so all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. That's right. So nations, so nations are blessed through Abraham. So Abraham was the, the father of nations, I think it means. So Abraham was the, the father of faith. He displayed an exceptional um, display of faith right there. Hebrews 11 and 17, it says, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he had received the promises offered up Offer up his only begotten son. That's right. And, and uh, Isaac was a precursor to the Lord. Now the Lord was the land without blemish. Which a lot of you guys are denying that that offering when you uh, sit up here and talk about Moses all goddamn day. <laughs> that means you don't have nothing to do with this. That's, that's all that means. All you guys teaching new moons or whatever the fuck. So Abraham uh, was the was the 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 father of faith. The law. Abraham was before the law and was displaying how to obey the Lord through the Spirit and how to know how to do the right things. John 8 and 33. John 8, 32, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You see that? So what the Lord was getting at, if you understand how it's shy, that if you, the Lord came to make you free from that law. And this is the whole discourse between the Lord and um, these scribes that were holding the Moses. It says they answered him. So he was coming to make you free. Not just from the curse of the law, from the whole from the whole law. That's why the scriptures say that um, 
um, that this is not of the latter, but of the spirit. So guys that are keeping you to the latter, they're not in the spirit. The spirit is not in the old law. The law is not of faith. John 8 and 33, and they answered and said, We be Abraham's seed, and we were never in bondage to any men. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? And Yahweh Shai answered them, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin. So guys that are under that old law, that are keeping you in that old law, they're still in their sins. You ain't going to get no new body. <laughs> A lot of you guys going to perish for teaching that shit. For real, for real. John 8 and um, 32. It says, And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And that's why that's what the Lord, that's what Paul tells you in the Galatians. That the Lord have redeemed us from the curse of the law. That means he have set us free from that. So everybody has not been freed. Now, check this out. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word have no place in you. You see that? So a lot of you guys, you hate this new covenant and you got that murder in you. You you will wish we stopped teaching it. Why? Because the Lord has no place in you guys. You guys are wicked. This word don't have no place in a lot of you guys. That's why the, the Lord called them devils. Um, in uh, this chapter. And that's why they, they was telling him that Abraham is dead. And and, and uh, you, you saying that you're, you're older than Abraham. <laughs> See, they were carnal, man. They were carnal, bro. And you're your father, the devil. A lot of you guys, you, you guys are of Satan, man. A lot of you guys, man. And then he was telling these guys this, that were holding to Moses. Matter of fact, let's go to John 5, and I'm going to get out of here on this pretty much. Matter of fact, let's go back to John 8. I'll close it, I'll close it here. John 8 and 52, then the Jews, then said the Jews unto him, now we know that thou hast a devil, Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than thy father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets that are dead, whom thou makest thou, who thou makest thyself? And so Yahweh Shai is over the whole law. So Yahweh Shai is over Abraham. He's over Moses. That's the order. Check this out. Yahweh Shai answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honors me, and if whom ye say that he is your power. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. For if I say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. You see that? But I know him and keep his sayings. For your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and saw it and was glad. So the Lord was even foretold. I mean, Abraham was even foretold about the Lord and his covenant. And he was glad to see that day. So that makes you how a shy over Abraham, he's over Moses, he's over the prophets, he's over the law. Now, we don't take no uh, credit from Abraham or Moses and none of them, but there's an order of the spirit now. The spiritual law is under Yahweh Shai now. That's the new covenant. The carnal law is of Moses. That was the carnal law. This is a law on a whole nother level. It says, then the Jews said unto him, thou art not yet 50 years old. See, they hated the Lord teaching the new covenant back in them times. 
He says, thou is not, thou is not yet 50 years old and has thou seen Abraham? And Yahweh said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. You see that? So if the Lord was before Abraham, <laughs> it says, uh, um, then took up they stones to cast at him, but Yahweh hid himself and went out of the temple going through the midst of them and so passed by. You see that? So they wanted to stone the Lord because they didn't know who the Lord was. And you carnal guys in these camps, you don't know what the new covenant is or, or us or Yahweh Shai in this time. You don't know the Lord in this time. It's crazy. Guys are holding you to Moses, but then that scream the Lord's name and tell you they're waiting to get into a covenant. <laughs> you would never get into the covenant. You would never be in a new covenant. You would never be in a new covenant, man. You guys got to keep coming out of these camps. Uh, avoid all false prophets. All these guys in these camps, they don't have no faith. There is no faith waiting on a covenant. The Lord said in Matthew 12, you either with him or you're against him. The Lord said he'd rather you be cold or hot, not lukewarm in the middle. Guys are in the fucking middle waiting. They're not in the Lord. They're waiting. So, so a lot of guys been spewed out in this day, man. A lot of you guys don't have a chance in these last days. That's why I like the scripture tell you that the a part of the last seven plagues, the the bride of Yahweh Shai is being shown who the bride of the Lord is. And that's us certain brothers, man, that have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Repent to the new covenant. And with that, a hey, shalom.